This is your Barbados Today Morning News Update for Friday, June the 15th. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news at this hour, one of this island's political parties, Solutions Barbados, appears to be falling apart. Barbados Today understands that a major splintering has occurred within the three-year-old political organization with at least a dozen of the 28 candidates who contested last month's poll under the party's banner having left the party and now in the process of putting together their own political grouping. It's understood that the bitter breakup stems from the refusal of several former Solutions candidates to sign contracts binding them to severe financial penalties in the amount of one million US dollars if they opt to leave Solutions Barbados to join another political party. Now, while confirming to Barbados today that nine members had left the party, leader Grenville Phillips II sought to suggest that there was no conflict within his party, arguing that it was simply a matter of some members wanted to take a moment to determine the next step after a trying election campaign. The Barbados Workers' Union is reporting that its members are happy with government's decision to raise the wages of public workers by 5%. Following a three-hour meeting with the membership at its Solidarity House headquarters last evening, BWU General Secretary Tony Moore told reporters the increase was always in line with the union's negotiation goal dating back a year ago under the then-Democratic Labour Party government. Moore explained that while the union had pushed for a 15% wage hike, it was always prepared to accept an increase of between 4 to 6%. Police have identified the man whose lifeless body was found at Thompson Land, Mylor's Hill, St. Michael yesterday. He is 70-year-old Anton Edmund of Odessa McLean Avenue, Mylor's Hill, in the same parish. A neighbor who was also his caretaker identified the body. Lawmen say Edmund, a St. Lucian national, has been living here for several years. Residents said he often wandered the streets of the community, but they didn't know his name. I saw him once in the bell, but I never really saw him down here, that's the truth. I never saw him pass down here yet, so I was surprised. He's usually walk around. He's usually walk around. He frequently always walking away and he always getting bring back home. Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Mia Motley says the current system of managing concessions under the Tourism Development Act is anything but fair. In fact, she told a gathering of industry stakeholders here on Wednesday that what it had essentially done was to create three classes of hoteliers in the country. Motley suggested that the Gordon Butch Stewart-led Sandals Resorts International which benefited from a suite of concessions granted by the previous Democratic Labour Party government, would be made to pull its weight just like every other Barbadian hotelier. And therefore, one of the early things that the Ministry of Tourism will be looking at is how to bring about greater equity, as well as fairness and transparency in the management of those concessions under the Tourism Development Act. There's regional and international news after this short break. Welcome back with news from the region now. Trinidad and Tobago's National Security Minister Edmund Dillon is insisting that the country's recent anti-gang act will help reduce crime. His assurance comes as the Rasta City Muslim gang warfare flares up across neighborhoods along the East-West Corridor. TV6's Fane Richards reports. The will read benefit and that is straight from the Commissioner of Police. That promise about the Anti-Gang Act was held out since the legislation was in Parliament. But the minister admits that, to his knowledge, no gang member has been arrested and charged under the Anti-Gang Act yet. The act came into effect in late May. 
as killings in Gonzales, Beetham, Laventil and Arima are being blamed on gang rivalry, how long will it take for the police to haul in criminals under the act? I can't set a time frame for them. I can, I can give them what I believe should happen. And this is what I do, from a, at least from a policy and strategic standpoint. Minister in the office of the Prime Minister, Stuart Young, says the Prime Minister has called for the National Security Council to meet on Monday on the latest flare-up. These are some of the questions we will be asking the police That's service correct. when we meet with them on Monday, because we have the same questions as you all. In the interim, Minister Dillon says there are bolstered joint patrols in the affected communities. He laments the shootings are senseless and random, in some cases, a way of life that frightens innocent members of the community. And on the international scene, a diplomatic standoff between Italy and France has escalated as the two countries trade insults over immigration policies. We pick up the story in this Euro News report. Italy summoned France's ambassador on Wednesday as a war of words erupted over French criticism of Rome's immigration policies. Interior Minister Matteo Salvini said he wouldn't take criticism from a country that regularly stopped migrants on their shared border. La nostra storia di solidarietà, generosità e volontariato the issue is that our history of generosity and volunteering does not deserve to be addressed harshly by representatives of the French government, who I believe and hope will apologize officially as soon as possible. Salvini received a standing ovation in the Senate. On Tuesday, French President Emmanuel Macron said Rome had acted with cynicism and irresponsibility by closing its ports to the Aquarius migrant rescue ship. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.